Today I'm continuing to work on the scenery at Granger Junction on my N-Scale layout. That's coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. Today I'm going to build abutments for the highway overpass at Granger Junction. I'm going to finish the overpass itself by installing railings that came in the mail. And I'm going to paint the overpass a concrete color. And I'm going to apply earth colors to the entire scene. Now, if you're a model railroader who enjoys sharing the hobby, be sure to subscribe to this channel because that's what we do on this channel. We share the hobby. And hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. I hope you will join me for layout updates every Saturday morning and for Dispatch, the weekly variety show for model railroaders, every Tuesday night. Now, first off, we're going to make abutments for the highway overpass. I'm using pieces of Woodland Scenics risers to do this. This is an easy but effective way to create the abutments. I cut a section of riser for each abutment. Now I excavate a hole in the hillside where I will install the abutment for the east end of the overpass. I insert the abutment in the hole. I test it by replacing the overpass temporarily to make sure that everything fits together and looks good. Oh, by the way, note that the overpass is still a dark gray color just as it came from Rick's products. I mention this because later on in this video you will see that I've painted it a concrete color. And now I have to install an abutment over here at the west end of the overpass. And here it is. I've applied a coat of Woodland Scenics concrete top coat to distinguish the abutments from the still unpainted scenery in which the abutments are embedded. The Rich Products modern highway overpass railings that I've been waiting for have arrived in the mail. I needed these to finish the west end of the overpass. That's the end which disappears into the backdrop behind the hill. Okay, I did a couple of things off camera. I finished the west end of the overpass by installing the railings that came in the mail. I painted the overpass a concrete color. I added sculpt mold where needed in the scene, especially this area right here. I applied a base coat of diluted desert yellow latex paint to the entire scene. Now it's time to paint the scene. I'm going to use Woodland Scenics Earth Tone Pigments to do this. The colors I will be using include stone gray, raw and burnt umber, yellow ochre, and white. I dilute the pigments by adding water to them until the mix looks good. I will apply these colors in a way that hopefully will replicate the light grays, tans, and light yellows of the region I am modeling. I like to start with the darker colors first and work toward the lighter colors. So I begin with stone gray. I apply this color sparingly, mostly in the crevices and under rock outcroppings, in a way that hopefully will highlight these terrain features and give the impression of shadows or darker areas of rock and soil. If you're modeling an Eastern Railroad, you probably would use a lot more of this stone gray color than I'm using on my layout. I prefer to use a small artist paint brush to do this. Since the color is highly diluted, it tends to run down the slopes as I apply it. And that's exactly what I want it to do because uh, this flow suggests erosion. 
Right now, the scene doesn't look so great, but as I apply the other colors and blend them together, it will look better and better as I go. Next comes diluted raw umber. I also apply this color sparingly because, again, I want to replicate the light colors of the region I'm modeling. Mostly I use this raw umber to blend the 3D scenery with the photo backdrop, which is a darker color. I also use it to suggest terrain further in the distance, as well as patches of darker soil. Note that I'm trying to leave the upper surfaces of the terrain features a lighter color, uh, suggesting uh, that the sunlight is striking these surfaces. Next, one of my two favorite colors, burnt umber. This color seems to suggest a certain reddish quality to the rock formations and soil of the American West. Like the other colors, it's well watered down, but I use it more generously on my terrain features uh, than the two previous darker colors. Again, I'm letting it run down the slopes to suggest erosion is taking place. And now my other favorite color, yellow ochre. When watered down, it matches the colors of the region I'm modeling very well. As you can see, I'm applying it generously because it helps blend together the previous colors I applied. It also works well on the upper surfaces of rock outcroppings or other areas where bright sunlight would be striking the terrain. And last, heavily diluted white. I apply this color just about everywhere on the terrain to lighten up the colors of the scene and to blend all of the previous colors together. I apply it generously with a larger brush than the one that I used for the previous colors. I will also apply it to the asphalt road surface to tone down that dark asphalt color to a weathered gray. Well, there you have it. The scenery at Granger Junction is painted, but I'm not going to throw away those diluted pigments just yet. As the colors soak into the scenery and dry, the terrain will become lighter in color, perhaps too light. So I may have to come back and darken up or even lighten up certain parts of the terrain. I've painted the terrain at the Granger Junction area of my layout, but the scene certainly is not finished. I still have to add vegetation to it, and I still have to paint and ballast the track, although I won't be doing that until I run my trains on it for a while to make sure that it works well. Now remember to come back for next Saturday's layout update and don't forget about dispatch on Tuesday night. Be sure to click over here to watch more videos. I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.